Hey, welcome back, everybody. Good Thursday morning. Hopefully, we're having a wonderful day out there so far. And uh, we do have some things to talk about in today's video. Hurricane Ernesto continuing to strengthen on approach to Bermuda and portions of Atlantic Canada. Also, uh, some severe weather back home that is ongoing today and will continue through uh, tomorrow and even into this weekend. But luckily, signs of fall potentially for, for some of us behind that. Now, I say signs of fall, maybe not uh, quite fall-like weather, but definitely a nice taste of kind of that early transition from summer to fall with some lower dew points and lower humidity out there. Uh, potentially going into early next week. So I'll break all that down for you in today's video. Uh, now, if you are new here, welcome. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Comment, let me know where you're watching from. And uh, also like the video and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Um, a couple of housekeeping things here at the beginning. Uh, I am moving apartments today. Uh, so I'm moving from my current location to my new location for the new school year. Uh, so there will not be a video out tonight. There will be 99% uh, sure tomorrow morning. Uh, and then we should be good to go tomorrow evening as well. And then by then I'll know a little bit more about my schedule for the upcoming future. But uh, again, classes start on Monday for me. So the evening video thing is going to kind of uh, slowly transition out anyway. Now I will still do them some days of the week. I'm thinking right now, probably Monday evening uh, for sure. And uh, then we'll see what other nights can happen. I'll just have to find out uh, how the class schedule is going to work and certain other schedules I'm going to have to balance here. So uh, it'll be a little bit of a learning curve, a little bit of a transition for the channel, but hopefully once we get a week or two on down the road, we'll be set in to a pretty good schedule. But either way, morning videos will continue seven days a week for the foreseeable future uh, here as uh, long as nothing major happens. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what's going on today. And uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning again, definitely uh, with kind of the new backdrop and everything. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that then. But uh, with all that said, that's enough of me rambling on. Let's go ahead and talk some weather here. And here we go. Sun is rising on Hurricane Ernesto. And uh, wow, he uh, he's looking pretty good this morning for sure. Definitely uh, probably better than this time yesterday by a pretty good margin here. Uh, still just a Category 1 storm, though. I will say that. Now, borderline Category 2, uh, Ernesto is getting quite close to that hurricane, or excuse me, to that Category 2 hurricane status. Uh, and uh, we are expecting that transition sometime today up to get, uh, Category 2 strength uh, and potentially into major hurricane territory tomorrow on final approach to Bermuda. But again, a healthy looking storm on satellite this morning. Uh, and if we kind of zoom this in and look at it even more in depth here on the uh, infrared uh, loop here, uh, yeah, again, a, a healthy storm. Now, not a perfect storm at the same time. It's not a very symmetrical storm. It is slightly lopsided towards the east. Uh, which unfortunately could be bad news for Bermuda because the storm is expected to either go over the island or just to the west of the island. So uh, you could be right there into the worst of the storm. Uh, and again, the storm is still going to have more time to organize and strengthen on approach. But again, uh, you'll notice kind of this uh, cinnamon bun look to it this morning. Definitely a good looking Category 1 hurricane uh, as it continues to strengthen here. And uh, you'll also notice all this cloud cover up above. Uh, this is a trough or a front that's kind of working on through here. Uh, and is uh, going to help pick up uh, Ernesto here and bring him to the north and uh, out to sea-ish. Uh, not fully. Again, we will have impacts to Bermuda, although Bermuda kind of is in the middle of the ocean. So, uh, you know, whenever we say out to sea, that's uh, generally not a good sign for you folks. Uh, and then we do have some potential impacts for Canada on down the road. But the good news is uh, I think it's going to really be a Newfoundland kind of impact with this one, not so much Nova Scotia or New Brunswick. So uh, not good for you folks in Newfoundland, that is. But uh, for everyone else, you know, at least you take a little bit of a sigh of relief there. All right, again, the latest here, uh, latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Currently 975 millibar Category 1 hurricane max winds of 85 miles an hour is the latest update that we have. Uh, and again, uh, knocking on the doorstep of Category 2. We are expecting a 100-mile-an-hour powerful hurricane uh, by the time we hit 2 o'clock this afternoon with that update. Uh, and we'll probably you know, continue to strengthen throughout the evening tonight before sometime Friday afternoon, likely to get to peak intensity near Category 3 strength. Uh, you know, it could be a little under, it could still be 110 miles an hour, it could be a little bit over, it could be 120 miles an hour. Uh, again, we'll just have to wait and see. But because of this, Bermuda now under a hurricane warning for the entire island. So uh, again, uh, go ahead and finish any preparations you can today. And again, it's going to be a little rainy out there because we do have that front working on through. Uh, but things go downhill very quickly uh, into Saturday. Uh, really, even starting Friday afternoon, some of these outer rain bands will kind of begin to work on it. And then through the evening, through the overnight, and then kind of peaking Saturday afternoon uh, with the worst of it, and then slowly getting better there throughout the evening on Saturday and into Sunday. 
Now, our friends up in Canada, again, if you're watching from uh, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, this storm doesn't look to be your storm, luckily, but uh, if you're watching into Newfoundland, specifically the southern coast here from St. Pierre into St. John, uh, yeah, definitely could see some problems out of this one. And again, plenty of communities in here that are in the cone here, uh, and we are expecting a powerful post-tropical cyclone up to this point with hurricane force winds, probably category one hurricane force winds, uh, but again, would probably be post-tropical by that point. Uh, so again, you're, you're also in the cone, so don't let your guard completely down. And if we take a look at the latest track here, you can see that again, uh, for Bermuda, it's basically the storm's going to go right over you or up to 100 kilometers to the east or west of you. Um, but uh, for again, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, the storm looks to miss you. Newfoundland, latest model guidance, most of them even keep it south of the island, but some do scrape this kind of uh, extra peninsula here, which unfortunately I'm not super familiar with Canadian geography, but uh, that kind of, you know, extreme south, the eastern portion of uh, the island could have a landfall. Uh, but if we're lucky, the storm will, you know, kind of take some of these more southern tracks and completely stay offshore uh, for you folks. Now, intensity wise, uh, again, we are expecting a category two to category three storm at peak intensity sometime tomorrow after that plateauing through Bermuda uh, and into the weekend. And then once we hit those very cool waters up into the North Atlantic, beginning that weakening trend uh, as the storm passes uh, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada. So that's kind of the latest thinking on intensity and track here uh, with Ernesto. All right, wind speed forecast for Muta. Yeah, it's basically guaranteed you're going to get tropical storm force wind speeds. It's also relatively likely at this point that we will see some tropical storm uh, force winds again into the southern section here of uh, uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. So, uh, you know, watching out in that area again, further north, even through Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, the east coast of the United States, we're all good. We're not going to really see any wind impacts, but we will see other impacts. Uh, and again, this is a big time storm. I showed you on satellite. It's, you know, it's a, it's a pretty chunky storm, as we might say. Uh, uh, so we are going to see some surf concerns, some rip current concerns, and some big waves up and down the East Coast. Uh, so if you are traveling to the beach, or if you're just at the beach because you live there, or however you get there, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to those uh, rip current flags and, uh, you know, just double checking that forecast with your local meteorologist or uh, National Weather Service. Uh, kind of uh, location there that is giving you the latest information there. So uh, again, that's going to be something we're going to want to watch out for. Again, not direct impacts from Ernest, so we're not seeing wind, we're not seeing rain, but yeah, the ocean is still going to be quite upset with us here as we have this big hurricane, uh, you know, moving, moving offshore. All right, hurricane force wind speeds. Uh, Bermuda, yeah, again, the forecast hasn't really get, uh, gotten much better since last night. Um, we are still expecting, you know, uh, the high likelihood that we see hurricane force winds through the island, especially the uh, kind of western part of the island. Now, Bermuda's not very big, but, you know, there are slightly higher chances of hurricane force wind speeds uh, on the, along the west coast compared to the east coast. But either way, the entire island is going to see impacts. Uh, and as for our folks in Canada, I think it's pretty unlikely at this point that we see hurricane force winds. Um, maybe, you know, a place or two gusts up to hurricane force at times along the extreme southern coastline there. Uh, but uh, sustained hurricane conditions are probably unlikely uh, anywhere outside of the island of Bermuda. All right, latest forecast here from some of our models. I will go ahead and circle the island of Bermuda, assuming we can find it on the map here. Uh, let's see here. I just saw it earlier. Again, I'm sorry. Here we go. Yeah, it's kind of at the southern end here. Uh, so again, this is the island of Bermuda. So just kind of pay close attention to that uh, as I loop this model ahead in the time. Uh, this is the latest GFS for this storm. And uh, here we go. This is into Friday afternoon. You'll notice uh, some of these outer bands of Ernesto. Oops, sorry. I just shook my entire desk and kicked it. <laughs> some of the outer bands though, of Ernesto beginning to work on through. And uh, you're going to likely see conditions kind of deteriorate relatively quickly. Gusty winds, heavy rainfall. And it will only get worse through the afternoon, through the evening on Friday, uh, and into the overnight into Saturday. Now, the GFS is a little quicker here than some of the other models, brings the core of the storm over early Saturday morning, uh, and then we would likely see improving conditions throughout the day. Uh, and then by the time we really get to Sunday evening, at least on the GFS, the storm is pulling pretty far away uh, and then moves up towards Canada. Now, the European model... Uh, it's a little bit slower, but either way, Friday afternoon and evening, conditions begin to go downhill, tropical storm conditions overnight into Saturday morning when hurricane conditions begin uh, as the sun is rising and continue through the morning uh, and into the afternoon hours here. Again, a powerful storm just moving just offshore to your uh, west there, but again, you'd be on the stronger side because the west side 
uh, or excuse me, the eastern side of the storm is a little bit uh, more loaded than the western uh, half of the storm. So again, you'd see hurricane conditions much of the day Saturday. That would continue overnight Saturday uh, and uh, begin to improve throughout uh, the late evening hours of Saturday. Uh, and into Sunday, we would really be all good by Sunday afternoon. So uh, that's the latest from those two models. And uh, wind gust wise, this is in kilometers per hour for the island. Uh, here we go. This is uh, starting overnight Friday into Saturday. Potentially those winds now gusting up past 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, and then by the time we're getting into the worst of it, Saturday morning and afternoon, uh, yeah, some of these uh, wind uh, gusts are very strong. 150, oops, sorry, 150 to 175 kilometers per hour. So again, major hurricane kind of wind gusts there, even if not sustained. Uh, and I will also add, these are max wind gusts, so it's not like every wind gust will get this high, but uh, the worst of it that you'll see are these numbers probably. Uh, so again, you know, plenty enough to cause problems, uh, you know, and uh, cause power outages. The good news though, wind again dies down by Sunday afternoon, still breezy for sure uh, throughout the day, but not nearly as bad as what we're going to see on Saturday. All right, Atlanta, Canada, I'm going to show you one model. It's the European because I think the European is probably worst case scenario. So this is, you can kind of take as, you know, the worst that you could possibly see. There is the potential uh, that maybe the storm is far enough offshore that we really don't see any impacts. But should the European happen, uh, I'll show it to you. So Monday morning and afternoon, here's Ernesto again becoming extra tropical at this point, bringing some very light rain bands uh, to the island of Nova Scotia, but likely not even really enough to pass tropical storm strength intensity. Uh, but it's a different story for Newfoundland and Labrador. Here we go. This is overnight Monday into Tuesday. Uh, strong low pressure scraping the southern part of the island. Again, a very heavy rainfall moving inland, gusty winds. Again, tropical storm conditions would be likely with this scenario. Uh, and then eventually uh, kind of works out of here by our uh, Tuesday morning and afternoon. It's mainly an overnight Monday thing. And again, at that point, the storm's kind of flying, so it'd be a quick hitting uh, system. So enough to mention, enough to know that you know you could see some impacts, but overall speaking, uh, nothing too out of this world. And again, this would be worst case scenario probably. Uh, again, seeing some wind gusts up to uh, you know 75 to 100 kilometers an hour along the southern shore. But again, inland into uh, further parts of uh, Newfoundland here, uh, not really many impacts at all. Same story for Nova Scotia. If I bring the wind field back a little bit, yeah, the coastline on the southern shore could see some stronger wind gusts, sure, uh, maybe gusting to tropical storm strength, but overall, uh, not really, not too much to write home about. In fact, uh, this wouldn't even really be comparable to a strong nor'easter. Alrighty, that is latest on Ernesto and the tropics. Let's talk about back home because, again, we do have a severe weather threat currently. Uh, ongoing this afternoon and into this evening, uh, and then really through the next couple of days as a pretty uh, potent little trough for August standards tries to work on through. So uh, here we go, current radar imagery. Most of the rain we're seeing through the lower 48 is over the heart of the country from St. Louis up through Iowa, Chicago area, getting some rain, Springfield uh, into uh, portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota. And again, you can see the low pressure here spinning away uh, and just kind of rotating all of this rain around it. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to do so and also continue to fire off some more discrete storms. In fact, I think yesterday we had a couple tornadoes in Kansas and maybe Nebraska as well uh, with this uh, storm system. So we're going to continue that trend today. Uh, and latest from the Storm Prediction Center for this afternoon uh, is below. We do have a slight risk of severe weather from St. Louis up through Chicago, really the entire state of Illinois and Missouri in that slight risk, I should say. Uh, and uh, even a marginal risk surrounding it, plus another marginal risk up into New England. Remember, we still have that leftover trough that's currently picking up Ernesto up here, uh, bringing some uh, stronger storms. Main threat today, strong straight line winds, some hail, and an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out. And we'll do it all again tomorrow, a big marginal risk uh, through the Ohio River Valley, through portions of the Midwest, even all the way back towards Colorado. Uh, you know, it's not hard to kind of pick where the low pressure will be and where its front will be. Uh, again, anything kind of out in front, uh, we'll have that severe weather threat tomorrow for our Friday. And then this weekend, we'll do it again, moving further east and south, much of the uh, southeastern United States, Charlotte, Atlanta, Birmingham, Jackson, Nashville, uh, the entire state of Virginia, and or the, excuse me, the entire state of West Virginia, much of Virginia, and even up into Pittsburgh, uh, Erie, Buffalo. Again, could see some strong storms for this start of the weekend, uh, including mainly strong straight line winds. Uh, and uh, an isolated tornado or two is not out of the realm of possibilities, and some large hail. All right, let's give you a possible look at radar for this event. So we'll get into this afternoon here, and we're going to still deal with this morning batch rain back out into the plains uh, or into the uh, Midwest. And uh, again, really, this morning batch is really 
I keep saying really, uh, is uh, more about flooding than anything else. We could see some strong storms this morning, but most of this is just going to be uh, heavy rain and moderate rain that could cause some flooding. It's this afternoon and evening that the second wave of severe weather develops. Uh, about the time the sun is going down, that first wave dies out and notice another band of strong to severe storms uh, kind of forming here back uh, into that slight risk area that could produce strong straight line winds, again an isolated tornado and some large hail, uh, and then likely congealing a little bit during the overnight hours into more of an MCS or a mesoscale convective system or a squall line, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we could see some gusty winds overnight tonight and by the time we're waking up Friday morning, uh, again, could see these storms try to become strong and severe through the Ohio River Valley. Also to the north through Michigan tomorrow could see enough instability uh, in the morning that we could see some strong storms, some feisty storms, but mainly, uh, you know, again, more of a rain event up here into the northern tier, excuse me, of Minnesota and into the UP of Michigan. Now we get this further into our Friday afternoon, and uh, again, some of that leftover convection continues to move south and east through the day Friday, <clears throat> but it's really the new storms of fire in the evening that'll be the bigger concern, severe weather-wise, again, anywhere uh, kind of in this circled area. Uh, again, could see some strong storms for our Friday evening. I know it's a big area, but uh, again, any of these kind of storms that pop up during the evening have that potential for severe criteria. Uh, and then we will uh, do it all again on Saturday. Same story. Those uh, storms during the evening continue marching through, weakening a little bit during the evening and overnight hours of Friday into Saturday. Saturday morning, we're going to wake up with some rain through the mid-Atlantic, probably the southeast, up into the Great Lakes as well. Uh, and then Saturday afternoon, about as far as this model goes out, could see more storms fire uh, and uh, again, become strong to severe. So it's going to be, you know, a marathon here with the severe weather event, uh, kind of a slow moving trough for sure. Not one that is really in any hurry to get anywhere, but there is some good news. Again, the severe weather we're not a fan of, but what could come behind the trough, uh, it could be quite exciting for a lot of folks. So this is this weekend. Uh, here we go again. This is our trough. Uh, by the time we get to here, this is Saturday into Sunday. Here's our converging side of the trough. This is where air is hitting each other or high pressure is forming. This is our diverging side. Uh, so where we could still see some severe weather and uh, low pressure forming at the surface. Uh, but uh, what's more important, again, is that backside where we're seeing this convergence um, aloft or that sinking air that is uh, coming to the surface. Again, it's going to bring high pressure. It's going to bring some nicer weather and potentially some drier, more fall-like weather. Now, um, I don't want you to consider this to be that first big cold front by any means of the year. It's definitely not, but it is a taste of what could be to come here. Uh, as we get closer to September, and notice that trough hangs around for a while, getting into early next week, uh, and then tries to die out a little bit, but some of our models even bring another trough kind of way on into the long run. So uh, again, this is a pattern right now that is promoting, you know, shots of cooler, drier air through the eastern half of the country to end August, and here's what it could look like. Again, muggy this weekend ahead of that cold front, but here it comes going into Sunday, Monday. Uh, notice this kind of area of some drier air moving southward uh, through the central part of the country. By the time we get into Monday and Tuesday, uh, yeah, this is the good stuff for sure. Look at this, Tuesday afternoon of next week, widespread areas here uh, getting dew points down into the 40s and 50s. That's going to feel amazing. Even as far south as potentially a place like Greensboro, Charlotte, we could get dew points into the 50s. Uh, Nashville, Knoxville, Atlanta potentially, uh, but really especially the Ohio River Valley. Uh, and if you got any trips to the mountains, blueberry picking or something, uh, early next week, it's going to feel about as good as you could ask. Again, we're going to have this much drier air, probably a little bit of a breeze, uh, and uh, it's going to keep these afternoon temperatures, uh, although they, they will still be warm for sure, it won't feel quite as bad. So again, this is getting into next week. Notice that dry air kind of hanging around. Uh, and then how long that dry air lasts, we'll see, but we should get a good couple of days at least. And I'll even show you real quick uh, temperatures uh, just to give you an idea of what those might look like here uh, in the same time frame. So uh, this is the European model. Again, it's going to stay hot this week. And let's just skip to the good part, though. Uh, this is next Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and look at these temperatures. Again, only in the 70s and 80s through the Carolinas and through the uh, Ohio River Valley. Warmer back down towards Texas. Again, unfortunately, the trough isn't going to be there. We're going to have kind of this... Uh, I should have mentioned this as well earlier. We're going to still have this kind of heat dome out here. So uh, warm through the southern part of the country, uh, or the south central part, I should say, through Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, back through the desert southwest. But uh, back out here into the Midwest, the Ohio River Valley, and the Mid-Atlantic, yeah, nice little break uh, from summer. Uh, and again, not fall weather per se, but getting closer to it for sure uh, as we keep on looking ahead here in the long run. So Alrighty, folks, I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in on this Thursday. Again, no video tonight, but uh, wish me luck that hopefully I don't break anything in the transit process. 
uh, and hopefully we'll be good to go tomorrow morning. But uh, yeah, y'all have a wonderful rest of your evening uh, and afternoon and morning whenever you're watching. Enjoy it, and I'll see you all next time.